welcome to class 5 on topics in power electronics and distributed generation. So, we have been discussing uh, models of components of the distribution system. We have looked at the transformer model, the line, then DG models and then we are looking at models of uh, what go in to protection equipment, uh, fuse, uh, uh, reclosers, sectionalizers. We are starting to look at uh, the circuit breaker, the inverse current characteristics. Uh, so, if you look at the uh, uh, circuit breaker, uh, you uh, have uh, equations that actually model both its tripping characteristic or its uh, reset action. So, it trips whenever its current uh, flowing through the breaker or uh, over current relay is greater than the pickup current. Uh, so, when the ratio m, the, when the ratio m becomes larger than 1, it initiates a tripping action and the time required to trip uh, depends on the value of this ratio uh, m. So, the larger the ratio m is, the shorter it requires to trip. Okay. Uh, the parameters A, B, P, T, R, E are constants uh, uh, based on uh, the type of characteristics that uh, it is following, the breaker or the relay is following. So, for m greater than 1, it trips and for m le less than 1, it resets. Okay. So, if you look at uh, uh, the parameters A, B, P, etcetera, you can actually classify uh, your uh, uh, overcurrent uh, protection devices as moderately inverse, uh, very inverse, or extremely inverse, uh, inverse uh, characteristics. Uh, good reference for this is uh, uh, I IEEE. So, so, if you look at the characteristics of the relay, if you uh, for the extreme and the very inverse type of characteristics, the value of p in the equation is close to 2. Okay. So, if you look at uh, a large value of uh, uh, m much greater than 1 and uh, the value of b which is close to 0, we have uh, uh, your trip time is given by a by m square minus 1 and for m being much larger than 1, this is roughly equal to a by m square and we know that m is i by i pick up. So, you have uh, a into I pick up square is equal to I square into T T R. So, essentially what you get for P is equal to 2 is a characteristic of I square T is a constant which is uh, similar to that of a fuse, fuse characteristic. Okay. So, essentially in a fuse your I square R T represents the energy that is dissipated in the fuse. So, you end up uh, requiring time depending on the amount of energy that is deposited in the fuse. So, uh, this sort of characteristic with P is equal to 2 for small values of B represents that of a is similar to that of a fuse. Okay. 
If you look at the B in the previous equation, uh, the B term over here, this represents the definite time aspect of the IDMT uh, uh, characteristic. So, if you look at uh, 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 having a finite uh, positive value of B, um, so if you look at the the B, it essentially shifts the the characteristic to a, a finite value, which says that. Uh, no matter how large your current is, it needs a certain delay uh, before the actual uh, protective device can act. So, uh, uh, so essentially if you look at this sort of characteristics, it can allow a, a large amount of current to flow for a short time without tripping the breaker, but if that large amount of current continues for much longer, then the breaker would trip. Okay? So, this type of characteristic is useful when you have uh, the, uh, uh, say components such as uh, motors where your motor starting current might be large, which means that uh, you will be operating at m uh, which is large, uh, but then once the motor speeds up, then uh, the current would come down. So, you can actually operate your device without causing your breaker to trip when you are starting the machine. Okay. If you look at the the, the reset time of the circuit breaker, the t reset time is also depend, uh, dependent on the ratio of current, uh, but typically if you look at your uh, nominal current that is flowing through your circuit, it may be much lesser than your pickup current. So, you can take m in that particular case under norm, normal condition to be operating uh, to be much smaller than 1, which means that T r e can be taken as roughly equal to uh, uh, capital T r e for m uh, close to 0. So, also for simplicity we can assume that the rates at which your reset or your trip action is uh, occurring is at constant trip rates or reset rates. So, depending on the time required for tripping, it is going from a point of normal condition to a trip condition and if the uh, uh, fault current goes away for some reason, then it is going at a constant rate back to the normal condition. Okay. So, if you look at uh, example uh, of say uh, a electromechanical uh, type of relay or a, a, a circuit breaker, essentially tripping action in such a breaker occurs when your, uh, your, your electromagnetic torque pro, uh, generated by the coil for tripping exceeds the, the restraining torque of your actual spring or the uh, or spring in the relay. So, whenever your uh, uh, generated torque is ex exceeding, your, your, uh, your protection a disc moves forward and it reaches a point where it would actually uh, cause a circuit breaker to act. So, these sort of actions that uh, I have I just mentioned also emulates not just of a fuse, but also of a electromechanical type of uh, protective uh, device. So, if you look at an example. Uh, of uh, say a, a circuit breaker, uh, where we will assume that it is uh, reset time is of the order of say 5 seconds and it is having a over current level I O C and at that particular value of I O C uh, with your parameters of the breaker, suppose you had a trip time. Uh, of say 2 seconds. Okay. So, if you had a 2 seconds of trip time, uh, then we can look at a, a couple of uh, situations. Say this could be a situation where you had a source, you had a circuit breaker and you have current flowing in the line and that is what is shown in the plot below, where at uh, uh, some particular point your current went up and uh, you have a over current which 
caused your uh, m to have a value much greater than 1 and at that particular value of over current your trip time is 2 seconds. But for some reason say if your uh, over current lasted say for 1.99 seconds and the over current went away it means that the breaker nearly tripped, but it uh, did not uh, actually trip. So, it is still staying closed at this point and over here it is actually having a reset action. And suppose this duration is 1 second, then during this particular 1 second the circuit breaker was uh, going through a reset action. So, to fully reset it would have required 5 seconds. So, in 1 second it would have reset by 1 fifth of the reset uh, value. So, it would be at this particular point it would have been at 4 fifths of the value to, uh, to actually trip uh, the actual uh, uh, tripping device. So, the question is now if your over current again came up it will not need to the same value of I O C, it will still not need another 2 seconds to trip, but it will need a smaller amount of time to trip and the amount of tri time that, would, that it would need to trip is uh, about uh, uh, it would have typically required uh, 2 seconds, but you have only one fifth of the distance for the tripping action to occur. So, it would need about uh, uh, 0.4 seconds for it to trip. So, you can see that assuming constant uh, uh, say tripping rates and reset rates you can actually look at what happens when uh, currents go up and low uh, in some switched manner. Okay. So, if you had another situation where uh, say you had an, a similar level of over current and a, the over current lasted for say 1.99 seconds and then the current went away or came back to a level much lesser than 1 for say 5 seconds. It means that at this point now your circuit breaker is fully reset. Now, if your over current level went up uh, to a higher level it would need actually a full 2 seconds to, uh, to actually trip again. Okay. So, you, depending on your calculated trip uh, time and your uh, reset time you could actually evaluate for what duration your uh, circuit breaker would need to actually operate with uh, devices such as reclosers where your current level can actually potentially go high and low. Again uh, this analysis of uh, assuming uh, 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 say constant trip rates and reset rates is a simplified analysis. Okay. So, if you look at uh, what we are doing we are tr trying to look at what are the implications of adding a, a distributed generator to a distribution system rather than actually doing a precise uh, analysis on how to set uh, uh, protection levels. Uh, in fact, today there are uh, there is a lot of software which is available which can be used to actually do precise coordination calculations. But uh, this uh, simplified analysis can give you a good feel of what are the implications of adding uh, of uh, coordinating protective devices and the implications of adding a distributed generation source to your actual system. So, now before we actually do a uh, 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 protection and uh, uh, coordination uh, based on these models, uh, what we have to do next is uh, actually evaluate what the fault current levels are okay. and to, uh, to actually calculate your fault current level it depends on, uh, uh, on where the fault is occurring, whether it is uh, occurring at a zone that is closer to the substation or a zone midway through the feeder or at the, uh, the distribution transformer at the consumption point. It depends on uh, the type of fault whether it is a three phase fault or a single phase fault, the fault impedance whether it is a dead shot or it is a impedance fault. 
So, if there are a, a variety of such aspects that, that need to be considered when you are doing fault calculations. Okay. So, here you are looking at whether it is three phase, uh, single phase, uh, different types of uh, combinations line to line etcetera, then uh, fault levels. So, to do these calculations uh, what uh, the tool that the, the analysis tool that is used is what you would have studied in a power systems analysis course. Uh, one is uh, uh, per unit analysis. So, where you look at the different components on a normalized basis and then evaluate what the fault currents are. And to look at uh, 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 situations of unbalanced uh, faults, you will do essentially a sequence models. for. So, uh, so uh, this uh, uh, both aspects are important. I mean, if you look at a three phase type of fault, it is easy from the calculation perspective, but uh, as we discussed in uh, previous class, uh, the most common type of fault is single line to ground fault. So, looking at uh, uh, different situations with uh, sequence models become important. So, if you do a, a, a per unit type of uh, calculation, first you need to identify all the components in your system. Then, uh, even if uh, the components are all provided to you on a per unit basis, uh, they might be on different base. You might have items which are closer to substation at higher power levels, at a higher voltage levels. The systems closer to the uh, consumption point would be at lo lower power levels, lower voltage levels. Uh, and to do the analysis, you need to bring it, bring them to a common base. And uh, you identify the location of interest to you, it might be your consumption point where you are doing your calculation or some distribution transformer where you are doing your calculation depending on the re region where you are trying to do your engineering analysis, you bring it to the common base associated typically with that particular point. Uh, then uh, you transform all the va values to this particular common uh, base corresponding to this common point and essentially when you do that with transformers essentially your transformers become transparent uh, on a norm, uh, on a per unitized basis. So, all your voltage levels and your transformers are tra uh, transparent and uh, uh, you bring in all the all the impedances for the different locations uh, 
at from different voltage levels to a consistent uh, per unit uh, per unit ice basis okay uh, i mean you will get a better feel for it when we look at uh, uh, the actual uh, an actual example where we can go through uh, and do what calculations we would need to do uh, if you look at uh, uh, so once you do the analysis you get your results on a uh, per unitized uh, values so what you really need is the physical values that you need for sizing a circuit breaker or setting your relay so you make use of your uh, base quantities to get back your actual uh, values for your uh, currents voltages etc uh, if you look at uh, uh, the use of uh, per unit analysis uh, compared to the past the use is reduced today because of uh, again extensive uh, uh, availability of software to do these calculations so all the normalization etc etc can be handled at a numerical level rather than uh, you having to handle per unitization etc however uh, there are many uh, applications where uh, it gives you a intuitive feel for does it make sense if you do the calculations on a per unitized basis uh, also when you look at uh, the power electronics design uh, even though uh, you do not need everything on a per unitized basis uh, for your controller design uh, per unitization is an important aspect because often you are implementing your control on a fixed point uh, processor. So, you need to actually normalize it to the fixed point uh, floating point processors are more expensive than fixed point and even if you are using powerful processors you need to do some level of normalization uh, es especially when you are uh, interfacing uh, A to D converters which have fixed voltage ranges and uh, uh, finite number of quantization levels etc D to A or PWM uh, ports again which have finite uh, bit resolution. So, having normalization and doing such an analysis is actually useful in multiple ways. So, uh, if you then look at what the base quantities uh, uh, need to be, uh, the common uh, uh, base quantities are the power, uh, it can be the apparent power, the S base on a, uh, if you are looking at a distribution system, you might be talking about MVA on a three phase basis. Uh, your voltage can be uh, 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 you have to get a base voltage it can either be uh, uh, your kilo volts on a, a line to neutral basis or a line to line basis. Uh, in this course we will look at uh, uh, the voltage on a line to neutral basis, uh, but uh, often it can also be uh, uh, done on a line to line basis. In fact, when people uh, uh, state uh, a voltage of a three phase system when they talk about uh, 415 or uh, 690 or 11 kV they are actually referring to uh, uh, line to line voltage. Okay. So, unless uh, otherwise specified people give the physical units for, for uh, three phase system uh, the voltage on a line to line basis uh, that is the no normal convention. For the base quantity we will use uh, the line to neut neutral voltage as V base. The uh, frequency the is the fundamental frequency uh, in India it is uh, 50 hertz that is the nominal frequency. Your, uh, your current base ca can be defined as uh, your uh, uh, power base divided by 3 divided by your voltage base on a line to neutral basis. So, this gives your base current in kilo amps. Okay. Uh, your impedance is Z base is is your V base by I base and you could have derived quantities these are useful especially when you are designing power converters when you are looking at uh, filter design etcetera. Your omega base is 2 pi F base your L base can be uh, obtained as uh, your Z base divided by omega base and your uh, C base can be uh, obtained as 1 by omega base Z base. So, these are useful especially when you are looking at power converters, filters etcetera. 
so, if you have uh, one per unit capacitance connected in parallel, it means that it is uh, filter drawing a lot of uh, leading wars. Okay. So, you can get a feel for how much wars are being drawn by looking at uh, these components on a per unit basis. So, if your L base is uh, 0.3, it means that there could be a substantial drop across that inductor series connected inductor when rated current is flowing. So, looking at uh, the impedances in uh, per unit basis is useful. So, the next thing is to uh, convert your, uh, your uh, from one base to another for actually your, uh, your normalization uh, calculations. Uh, one thing that uh, I would like to just point out, uh, when you make a statement that uh, one per unit equals uh, say 230 volts, uh, you are committing multiple errors. One is per unit means it is uh, does not have dimension, uh, 230 volts is uh, in volts. So, you are talking about a quantity a equation where the dimensions do not match and one is not 230. Uh, it would be uh, uh, okay to say one per unit corresponds to 230 volts or the base value is 230 volts. So, be careful when you uh, say uh, 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 about quantities on a per unitized basis. So, if you look at uh, change of base, uh, your actual uh, physical quantity, th the idea of uh, the change of base is that your physical quantity is not changing. If you change your base from one uh, system to another system, the per unitized value might change but your physical quantity stays the same and using that concept you get your uh, per unitized uh, uh, normalized uh, impedance in an uh, on a new basis to be the old value uh, multiplied by uh, the ratio of old to new uh, base uh, quantity square and uh, the ratio of uh, new power to old power uh, to the power of 1. Okay. There are implications of having uh, uh, such uh, an expression for change of basis. So, if you look at uh, if you look at uh, say uh, change of basis, uh, 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 one percent. So, example uh, one percent. So, if you go to a new basis because your uh, ratio was uh, your new uh, is equal to the old on a per unitized basis with uh, 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 the new value divided by old value. So, if you go up on a uh, on a to a new basis which is at a higher power level, your impedance uh, quantity becomes larger and uh, a implication of this is that say for example, if you have a load which is uh, uh, small. Okay. So, if you have a system where you have a source and you have some source impedance and you have say multiple loads. So, if you look at uh, your load of uh, 1 MVA, which uh, uh, on its uh, particular uh, basis it might be uh, a 1 per unit load. Essentially, now when you uh, shift it to the 10 MVA level, this becomes 
your uh, load resistance is now uh, uh, 10 per unit rather than one per, uh, 1 per unit once you bring it to a common basis. So, essentially what it means is uh, the small individual loads uh, becomes uh, seen as smaller and smaller entities which is the uh, reason why you might lump a uh, lot of loads together and see it uh, as a single uh, uh, load uh, power p q load etcetera on at the consumption point rather than look at individual loads when you are looking at larger and larger systems to which it is connected. Okay. If you look at uh, another example where you look at the implication of uh, say change in voltage level. So, if you have say a load which is having a, a power level of 40 uh, kilowatts and single phase and uh, you have say two uh, situations. Okay. So, case A uh, you have a 1 kilometer overhead line at 400 volts and the impedance of the line is say 1 ohm. Okay. So, if you look at it uh, uh, we may define your V base as 400, I base as uh, uh, would be 100 amps because P is uh, 40 kilowatts. So, your Z base is 4 ohms. So, if you look at now the model of the source with your load, your uh, impedance of your source is now uh, 1 ohm by uh, 4 ohms which is your base. So, it has a value of 0.25 per unit. So, looking back you are looking at a, a weak source where the source impedance is fairly large. Uh, now, if you take the same uh, 1 kilometer line and if you increase the the voltage level because of better insulation, but you keep say the diameter of the line, its geometry, etcetera, similar, and say you consider case B, where you have one kilometer line at uh, four kV, and say the uh, magnitude of its impedance is again one ohm, so. So, your V base in this case is 4, 4 kV, 4000 volts, I base is 10 amps, uh, Z base is uh, 400 ohms. So, if you look at the model of the system in this particular case, Uh, the load B. Now, this uh, particular physic physical line is now showing uh, 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 source impedance of 0 0.0025, which means that if you look at it from the load perspective, this is now a, st a stiff source. Okay. And uh, this is essentially the uh, when we look uh, look at it on a per unitized basis, you see that it goes as the square of the voltage. So, you can see that uh, now if you just take the same uh, 1 kilometer line, uh, it becomes important to look at it on a normalized basis to figure out whether you are actually encountering a situation where you are having a weak grid or a stiff system. Okay. So, uh, for a given power level, uh, 
uh, 1 percent impedance at 1 k v base is a uh, uh, 100 percent impedance at uh, 100 volts base. Okay. So, as one goes up to higher voltage levels, uh, uh, similar imped impedance will uh, appear actually much smaller. So, if you look at uh, your transmission system, your voltage levels tend to be very high. So, looking at it from the load side, you can actually get closer to the assumption that your grid is getting more and more ideal when you are looking back into the system. Okay. So, if you look at the uh, uh, another example, suppose you have now a transformer uh, which is uh, uh, 1 k v to 100 volt. So, you are uh, having a transformer uh, fr between uh, going from 1 kV to 100 volt, then essentially uh, a 1 percent impedance on the primary is uh, 1 percent impedance. Uh, 1 percent impedance on the secondary. So, this is because uh, your base on either side of the transformer has to be consistent with your turns ratio of the transformer. So, essentially uh, uh, when you are handling transformers, it becomes transparent in your per unitized analysis uh, for this particular reason. Okay. So, with this we will actually look at an example of, uh, of a system and uh, look at uh, how uh, we could make use of uh, what we have just covered to calculate what uh, the ratings of some components such as fuses and circuit breakers could be on a, on a system. Okay. So, we are looking at say uh, a, a system coming in from a substation. Uh, you have uh, uh, a substation ground, uh, grounded uh, 10 MVA uh, 11 kV feeder coming from the secondary side of the uh, transformer at the substation. You have impedance of the line and uh, so this is uh, the distribution line feeder impedance and say you are adding a new facility on this particular feeder a fairly large facility uh, with the interconnection transformer at uh, 2 MVA. So, it is a fairly substantial facility and uh, at uh, such power levels maybe you might consider say this particular point over here as the point of common coupling. Uh, essentially uh, the term point of common coupling is used as uh, the point at which you connect with the public system. Okay. Uh, for example, if you look at uh, uh, a house, uh, the point of couple common coupling for the house into your uh, street or for your transportation coming in and going out is your gate. Okay. So, essentially in uh, uh, the distribution systems uh, you can have different points of common coupling depending on where the responsibility of the utility ends and where your responsibility starts. So, if you take a home it might it would be at uh, 230 volts or 415 volts. Uh, after the meter okay, because the meter is actually owned by the utility. Uh, you do not go and make any changes to the meter. Your responsibility is uh, whatever is downstream of the meter. So, depending on the size of the facility you might for large ones you might put your meter all the way up at 11 kV uh, for smaller uh, homes it would be at the consumption level. Okay. And here you say want to add a fairly large facility and uh, the, it is rated at 2 MVA and uh, 
you want to actually say size the protection competence on this particular system and for which you need to know the, uh, the fault current levels. One common way of uh, uh, explaining what the fault current level could be is in terms of your short circuit capacity. Uh, so, when uh, someone says it is 120 MVA, so the, that represents the product of the fault current and the nominal voltage of the system uh, and to evaluate what the uh, what the short circuit capacity at that particular point is and the utilities can actually provide it to you especially when you are connecting large systems this would be an important aspect uh, of the information that you would need for sizing the interconnection. Okay. So, you have a fuse then you have a distribution transformer going from 11 kV to 415 volts, uh, it is uh, uh, impedance is 4 percent, uh, 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 4 percent reactance and winding resistance of uh, 1 percent is a delta y uh, and you have a circuit breaker at the secondary of the transformer and you have the internal winding within the facility and uh, you have a distribution burst before that and you have different uh, circuit breakers feeding each uh, 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 load from your distribution bus in within your facility and say you have one particular large load uh, which uh, is uh, uh, the wiring to it is rated for 1 MVA with a given in, uh, inductance and uh, resistance, uh, reactance and re resistance and then you connect it to a load through another uh, breaker to actually maybe protect that load. Okay. So, the question is can we get a feel for what should be the values of uh, the ratings for say F1, CB1, CB2 and CB3 uh, in such a system. So, the first step is uh, to evaluate the short circuit uh, current at your uh, PCC uh, based on what is the equivalent impedance uh, facing back. So, the impedance facing back from the PCC is this feeder distribution line impedance, you might have the substation transformer uh, impedance, you might have the primary side of your substation transformer which is at a higher voltage. Uh, which gets reflected back. So, you are looking at the overall impedance facing back. So, that can be calculated from this uh, short circuit capacity at this particular point. Okay. So, if you look at uh, the uh, short circuit uh, the source. So, the first thing is to look at the source side. Uh, this uh, source side impedance would consist of the feeder And you are uh, told it is uh, short circuit capacity is uh, uh, 120 MVA. So, your short circuit current is 120 MVA uh, divided by 3 divided by 11 kV divided by root 3. So, this gives 6.3 kilo amps as your short circuit current level. Okay. So, if you look at your source you would uh, it is V by I S C and it is 11 K V divided by root 3. And you are told that it is at uh, this current is at 60 degree. Uh, short circuit MVA at 60 lag, so e to the power of minus j uh, pi by 3. So, you can calculate the numbers, this, uh, this turns out to be 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.87 ohms. Okay. 
So, uh, you uh, got the physical value of this uh, impedance that this impedance now represents this total uh, uh, impedance as seen from the point of common coupling. And if you want to say look at it what does this mean on a, a per unit basis you know your source is, is uh, 10 MVA. source by source I mean the at the substation this is 10 MVA. Uh, so, your V B is 11 root 3 K V uh, I base your z base is your v b by i b which is 12.1 ohms. So, if you look at your value of your r s this would be uh, uh, 0.5 divided by 12.1 uh, into 100 to give it in percent. So, this would be 4.2 percent and your x s is 0.87 which we calculated divided by 12.1 in percentage this would be 7.2 percent. Okay. So, now we could uh, uh, look at the, the fuse, the fuse in this particular system uh, should be rated assuming that uh, you could have a fault right here and the primary of the transformer. So, the only uh, uh, element that is limiting the fault current level uh, is the source impedance. So, that would determine what is the fault current level that would flow through the fuse. So, and the, the load of the fuse is a 2 MVA transformer. So, you know based on your 2 MVA uh, uh, rating that uh, your nominal current for the fuse is the nominal current see that the fuse would see is 100 amps and your short circuit current from your previous calculation is 6.3 kilo amps RMS or 9 kilo amp peak. So, that gives you uh, uh, two of the quantities that you would need for actually selecting the fuse. You know that your voltage rating your nominal operation is 11 kV your isolation voltage has to be uh, much larger than that. If you take it as twice that you are uh, saying greater than 22 kV. So, this would help you in selecting the fuse. Okay. So, you look at uh, the fuse in terms of uh, the nominal current it would it needs to carry and also your peak current that it would need to interrupt if there is a fault on the distribution transformer on the primary side. Okay. So, the next element that uh, we could look at is then the distribution transformer itself. So, uh, once you look at the distribution transformer you could actually then calculate what is the fault current uh, that uh, could occur uh, in your bre uh, breakers uh, C B 1 through uh, C B 5. Okay. Uh, 
its primary current is 1 kilo amp, 0.1 kilo amp which we just uh, calculated and the secondary current can be calculated with its uh, turns ratio this is this is uh, about 2.8 kilo amps okay so if you look at then your base quantities for this particular transformer uh, it depends on whether you are looking at it from your 11 kV side or whether you are looking at it from your 415 volt side. So if you calculate your Z base or from your primary side this turns out to be 60.5 ohms and from your uh, 415 volt side this turns out to be 0.5. So, when you say your X L is uh, uh, 4 percent and your R W is winding resistance is say 1 percent, essentially if you are looking at it from the, the high voltage side this would correspond to 2.42 ohms on the low voltage side this would be 3.4 milli ohms and uh, your rw would be 0 0.61 ohms and on the low voltage side you would have 0 0.86 milli ohms okay so to calculate now your fault current with it within the facility you need to combine both the the uh, the per unit quantities of your distribution transformer and whatever you have from the source side which is the upstream feeder etcetera. And what we will do in the next class is combine it to the voltage level of the transformer because maybe you are more interested in designing the, the particular facility and look at the components that go into the facility. So, we will make use of that in the next class to actually uh, continue with this particular example of how to do the calculations and make use of the per unitized calculations for uh, sizing your components, okay, protection components. Thank you.